Hey everybody, welcome back to Kingdom Life TV. For those who don't know, I am Rashina and I am Press. Yep, and we're here with another video. We just want to say we just really appreciate everybody that views our channel, whether you know us personally or I don't know, maybe YouTube recommended us. Thank you so much for watching. All right, so today we have something interesting. It's interesting to us. <laughs> um, we'll be talking about our favorite books in the Bible, yes. books of the Bible. Um, while we were making our list, I had to tell Price to please <laughs> <laughs> don't. You can't say all the books in the Bible now. <laughs> so um, though this was a little different, um, difficult for us, we. We caught a down. few, and I don't know. While talking, we may add more, but yeah, yeah. Go yeah. ahead, babe. What's your favorite book? Before you even move on to what's my favorite book, mm -hmm. um, really, be I really believe that, like every book of the Bible, it has something in it mm -hmm. that you cannot oversee or you cannot pass it. Mm -hmm. So every every book of the Bible, it has fundamental things mm -hmm. in it that mm -hmm. that helps you to grow that widens your scope widens your knowledge and helps you to really be triumphant mm -hmm. in this life um but if i had to say the favorite books of the bible mm -hmm. um the book of acts oh yeah the book of acts is one of my favorite 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 books mm -hmm. of the bible because um it shows you the the establishment of the church and how it became, how it came alive. Through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, mm -hmm. through the power of the Holy Spirit. Many say that the, it's the book, it's the book that, that is called the Acts of the Apostles, and many mm -hmm. say the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But I really believe that. Uh, yeah, I do. Whether, any way you call it, it is the same, it, ha it bears the same power, it gives glory mm -hmm. under the name of Jesus and, Christ. And um, if you are interested in really operating in signs of wonders and miracles mm. and um ministering and speaking to people the book of acts is so graphic and if wow. you and if you use the same bible that we use which is the takarta app which we've mentioned mm. before in one of our previous videos you when you read it it it, it like it, it comes alive and mm. i think one of your favorite part was when you saw the the, the court case for paul yes. Yeah, yes. that was that was yes, really yes, good. Yes, that was really good. Anyone that has a court case, I believe they should really, mm -hmm. really, really pay attention to mm -hmm. um, what happened to Paul in his. It really shows you how to contend in the courtroom, mm -hmm. how to represent yourself in the courtroom. Yeah, so we really, really like the Book of Acts, and if you follow really us, good. we can talk about the Book of Acts because we just read it all. So. <laughs> Yeah. It's the book of signs, wonders, and miracles, manifold manifestations mm. of the Holy Spirit yeah. through the apostles and through mm -hmm. even the evangelists that are mentioned and through the prophets and especially through the life of Paul. And if you understand that, Luke was the one that wrote this book. He was the one that put it all together because mm -hmm. he said that, Oh, Theophilus, he wrote it unto somebody, explaining him and showing the person how graphic mm -hmm. and how God would have anointed his people, anointed mm -hmm. Jesus of Nazareth, to perform signs, wonders, and miracles so that he could bring glory to his name. So it is yep. really... Man, it, yo, no, don't, yo, one, go on, the, next <laughs> the next book... The next book is God. Ephesians. We recently just read Ephesians. Mm. Ooh. Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians. Yes. Um... It helps, the book of Ephesians to me helps you as a believer to understand mm. who you are in Christ. Yes. That you are seated in heavenly places mm -hmm. that because Christ Jesus is, you can be. You understand? Yes. yes. So I really love that about the book mm. of Ephesians. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I thought you had something to say. You finished the book of Ephesians already? That's why I looked at you. No. Because <laughs> I know you have something to say. That's it, my thing about Ephesians. I really yeah. like that about Ephesians. It, 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 as I said, that it really shows you your position in Christ, in God. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a, it is basically a summary of what Romans, um, of the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. It basically summarizes everything to you. Because mm -hmm. the book of Romans 
Well, let me not get there. That's but, on our list too. But, but Ephesians, it is a summary of everything that has, that, that Paul would have wrote the, um would have wrote to the mm-hmm. Romans about. Mm-hmm. It's really that book that really says, yo, it, it, it makes your spiritual senses be open, especially in Paul's prayer mm-hmm. in chapter one. Yeah, and I think that if you are a new convert, mm-hmm. if you're a new believer, and you know you're not really sure and you're trying to understand this whole um new birth, new believer mm. walk, um the book of Ephesians can help you with that too. Yes, and let us not even forget, because because in chap um in chapter five and in chapter six, yeah, but it speaks to you about spiritual warfare, and it speaks to you also about putting on the whole armor of God as a Christian believer. So mm-hmm. you really understand warfare and the positioning of the principalities and the powers, um, and their ranking, and it also shows you that hey, put on the whole armor. Is it the same book that God. is it? Because we've read so many books <laughs> in the past few well, weeks. Yeah. Uh, is it the same book that speaks about the body of Christ? Yes, it does yes. speak about the body yes. of Christ as well. So it helps you to understand that we all play a role mm-hmm. in verse um, four. The, the book. Um, well, the chapter body, four. In the body of Christ. Chapter four really yeah. shows you. Mm-hmm. Say, hey, some are called apostles, prophets, pastors, yes, teachers, evangelists, yes, yes. and all these people, but everybody. You, you cannot go off by yourself mm-hmm. and do what you want because everything works in alignment to bring completion and perfection so that the church of God, the people of God can be mature and perfectly built Yo, up. Yo, when we were reading that book, <laughs> I think like when we were like reading that. that book, I was like, wow. And it speaks a lot mm. about being a babe in Christ yes. for too long. It says yeah, that... So too. It says that you are really supposed to grow. Mm. You're supposed to grow in Christ. That book is so amazing. Go and read Ephesians. Ephesians, go. All read right. it, go. So, um, the next book that we have here is Genesis. Ha! I think you should speak mostly on this because, um, man. I so love good. the book of Genesis for many reasons. Um, and Bishop would call it the book of first mention. Like, yeah. a lot of first mentions in the book where you see God operate with his people. Principles, doctrines. Yes. Everything. First so, mentioned. I like I like how graphic the book of hmm. Genesis is. <laughs> um, I love how it talks about Abraham and um, Isaac, Jacob, Esau. Yeah. And you see Abraham's life progress that with Lot and his, his wife, Sarah. And when he even got a, a second wife after Sarah passed off. I really love all of that. And the book is the book is sexual too you, there's some <laughs> there's some sexual things in it when there's i read it, when i read it i was like hmm. really <laughs> really <laughs> like okay then <laughs> this is happening so um the book of genesis i really like that about the book of genesis how graphic it is yeah i love that it ro- it really shows you like everything structurally mm-hmm. it goes right down to to um from from abraham's birth his life and what god would have spoke to him mm-hmm. his sons his 12 sons um moses coming out of that um and going through even through exodus it really it really yeah, has yeah. power it mm-hmm. really has um um that sort of thing to it um the other book wow that's you do you love this one well i love this one isaiah too. Mm-hmm. there's something about the book of isaiah that i it's have so prophetic and it's, it's very much prophetic and and though it's not in the New Testament, mm. the church can really use a lot of Isaiah to, mm. to grow and understand what happened, what's about to happen. Yes. Mm-hmm. This book, it speaks about Christ. It prophesies. It mm. speaks about the coming Christ and what he will endure mm-hmm. and a bunch of other things. If, if you're weak, it says, hey, mount up with wings mm-hmm. as an eagle. You shall walk and not faint. You shall run. Yeah, I really like this book. book it is compact. It's a compendium of who Christ is and what God's desire is for his people mm-hmm. and for the church. And when you really read it, hey, you, 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 you can learn how to war, how to fight. Mm-hmm. How to, and you can see even how Satan was cast out of heaven mm-hmm. in that same book. So oh, yeah. it really has, it, it is like the whole Bible in one book. Because yeah. the, the, it really has 66 chapters. And if you understand, the oh, Bible has yeah, 66 yeah, books. Yeah, yeah. So it's, so it combines mm-hmm. everything in one book mm-hmm. and it helps you to touch on every other book of the Bible. So I like it's really that about amazing. Isaiah. It's really I amazing. I like that about Isaiah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's really amazing. So 
Um, so that's Isaiah. Next one we have here is the book of Jeremiah. Mm. Why Jeremiah though? Um, I like Jeremiah because just like many of us, in, in the first couple of chapters, mm. this, we like were unsure, like we're saying, God, I don't know if you really called mm. me. And God said, listen, bef- when you were in your mother's womb before, even that, ah. I know you and you are called for this purpose. And I read one of the main reasons I wrote Jeremiah 2 is because um, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 is my favorite Bible verse. Call. It says, call unto me. How did you know that? (laughs) It says, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things. Wow. Yeah. And everybody, you know, I know people use Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Yes. A lot too. So that's why Jeremiah, I like Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Um, first and second Kings. Woo, woo. Hmm. I well, like Kings. Me, you go on that one, yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Well, um, I I have a lot to say about Kings, but I'll just really just concise it. I really like Kings because of how much it tells about Elijah mm. and how you really see that man, God working through that man with um him calling on fire and mm-hmm. how God used him to speak to quite a few women and you know how God used him so much even with among kings and so and people you, just read it and it just read it just read it just read it just read it, just read it. I love the book of kings though I really do and it, and it also shows you the relay that a man of God no matter how anointed you are you sh- you have you should pass, pass on, on the baton, baton. Mm-hmm. pass on your mantle pass on that grace that God has upon your mm-hmm. life from Elijah should, to Elisha. No matter what what you are doing, whether you are in ministry or have a, a job or, or business something. or whatever, you have to train up persons. Mm-hmm. You have to impart that knowledge onto persons so that persons can really carry on even after you have left. Yeah. In a more greater yes. a, um, dimension of mm-hmm. what you would have would have done and and would have and because you have taught them something and you have imparted something to them, now they can build on that knowledge and even succeed mm-hmm. double mm-hmm. and double so what that you person have done. becomes your successor yes mm. yes yes yeah yes. and i think um just talking about as you said that i think if a lot of parents mm. would have this mindset mindset it wouldn't be so difficult i guess yes in a way for their children for their offspring if we should take up the mantle take up the, the challenge to say okay i'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do and I'm going to pass on what I know to my child or whosoever. It doesn't have to be your biological mm. child. You could could be your, like your mentee. That mentee you now can build on what you have. So what yes. took us 10 years? Shouldn't take our children 10 years? No, it should not. It should leave a foundation. It mm-hmm. should leave something behind. <coughs> the, um, the Bible <coughs> says it um, over and over again that a good man leaves a heritage for his child yeah leaves a heritage for mm-hmm. his children yeah. and even the book of genesis we should be we should have spoken about that because sure. it, it it speaks about it also um what we just said about um elijah passing on the on the mantle to elisha mm-hmm. because even in genesis oh, yeah. you see mm-hmm. the, the, the fathers blessing their children mm-hmm. they bless their children before they depart from mm-hmm. this life they they bless them they come together and say hey come for the blessing come yes and they impart blessing on them. And I'm telling you, those things come to pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we also like the book of Romans. <laughs> oh, God. We like Romans. the book of Romans. So why, did, why don't we have if, um, Hebrews? Hebrews. I don't know. All right, but, let, but let's talk about Romans first. I like the book of Romans mm. because um, <clears throat> it, it it's really the book that um, people often use to lead people to Christ mm-hmm. so people can become saved you know those scriptures that people say for the by wages. grace are you saved yeah um, for the wage just in his death mm. and all of those stuff and I love Romans because it teaches you Christian conduct too. yes if you read um, Romans 8 or Romans 12 it can mm. really help you it's the same book that talks about that you have to be transformed <clears throat> In your mind. So I love Romans because it can really help you to grow in Christ. I remember in my old in my early walk when I just got saved and I was battling with some things. 
man, sexual desires and fornication, all those things were coming up. Because as, as, as a young man coming to Christ, you have to understand that even something that weren't bothering you before starts to, starts to hit at you. And when I read Romans, man, I, I'm telling mm-hmm. you, the words on it, it's like it leaped mm-hmm. off, Romans will make you off the page mm-hmm. and start beat me. And I say, Romans oh, will make you straight get in up. line. It rebuke, the, Romans rebuked me so mm-hmm. much. Made it free for going Christian, Romans. Christian conduct, it really <laughs> it helps really to. The book of Galatians can do that. Yes. Too. It does. Because okay. it's basically a relay. Mm-hmm. Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, Colossae, mm-hmm. and Colossians. Mm-hmm. It really, it really, yeah. it really grounds you in mm-hmm. Christian conduct, Christian yes. principles, mm-hmm. and how you conduct and carry yourself yes. as a believer. Yeah, so though we don't have um, Hebrews on our lips, we can't leave out Hebrews. We just got through finished <laughs> re- reading Hebrews. Wow. And um, it talks a lot about wealth in the latter part. It talks a lot about faith and mm. you see how these men of God really just run the race with yes. faith. And and it, it, it always, I always tell Paris that it, it encourages me when I read the book of Romans how they were spoken of. And when you read these individual stories, you're like, never but these people were not perfect at yeah. all. Gideon was afraid. <laughs> Sarah laughed at God when, when, when she was told that she would have a baby. Yeah. Like these people were not perfect. So it just goes <laughs> to show how much God um regards our faith in mm-hmm. him. Um and you talked about latter. Um let me talk about the the, the first part of yeah, it. The sure. first part of it. It teaches you ev- basically Christ, what who Christ is. Um it it, it, it explains the book of Exodus, it talks about Leviticus, Mel- Melchizedek, and the yes. priest, priesthood. The priesthood. Okay. It, it talks about the book of Leviticus so much, and it breaks it down in a way and a manner that lets you understand that what they were doing in Leviticus, killing mm. animals and these things, it was pointing to Christ. Christ. It was pointing to Jesus. It helps you have that understanding, that knowledge, mm-hmm. what it means to be in the holy holies of holies, mm, what it sure. means to be in the outer court, and mm. all these things. It really gives you a very graphic understanding that mm-hmm. the God that used to be pleased when you kill goats and bulls and pigeons and we all these things, no it is not, it, no that is no longer in effect because Christ has offered himself that once and, and for all our sins. So no need for a man to go into, um, into a room and kill goat and mm. put it on a, on a place and say, hey, Offer your sins are... Yeah, your sins are overlooked mm-hmm. but now christ has seen wiped away yeah. all our sins as if they never existed so we really love the book of hebrews and yeah. i think galatians is one book too oh god. my god <laughs> fruits of the spirit oh yeah Talks that's why that. that. we tied it with romans mm. but Man. oh yeah these books are these books are good these all the books are good but these are just our favorite books our and favorite books. We hope that you would go and read some of these books too. Have yeah. fun with it. Yeah. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. Mm. Open yourself to understanding what God is saying to you and what he hopes to accomplish to you, to building you. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> remember to like, comment, and subscribe and watch our other videos. See you soon.